Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauties Restorations. Uh, today we're going to be working on this 1967, I think. I'm not really sure what year this Spitfire is. And no, it's not my Spitfire. My Spitfire is over there in that shed. You see it? Yeah, that's my Spitfire. This one is actually much better looking than mine and much better driving. It has an overdrive. It's a fantastic car, actually. I really like how it performs. However, it has a small problem. And this small problem, as you may already guessed, is in the gas tank. So let me show you what is inside. Yep, it is really bad, like really, really bad. So the owner recently got it and he brought it to me for tune up and all that stuff. And he kept telling me that the gas tank needs to be somehow treated, but uh, we decided initially to leave it alone and we just put filter after filter after filter and it kept getting clogged to a point where the last time the owner brought it to me for something else he actually got stuck like two kilometers away from me on the side of the road because the fuel line got clogged so i went and i told him here and then we blew back from the from the front of the fuel line with the compressor and it went poof and unclogged the line and then it was able to start again but anyways uh, this time we're gonna take the tank out and we're gonna have to treat it somehow i just drained it and i have a electrical fuel pump but i didn't want to use that because it was gonna get clogged so i used my vacuum pump because it's easier with it uh, you know, it creates vacuum inside, and then the only part that can get clogged is this tube that gets connected to this hose. And it got clogged a few times, but I'll show you pictures here of what, what's inside. I had it open now. You can see, kind of, but it's it drained a lot of uh, garbage, and of course, that's normal because you saw what's inside so anyways i just wanted to show you the before picture i'm gonna take it out now and we're not gonna go fancy schmancy with any liners and anything like that we're just gonna go with muriatic acid to treat the rust to convert it in whatever it is then then we're gonna have to neutralize the acid because if you leave the fumes there even they're gonna they're very corrosive and they're gonna uh, make it rust even more so once we're done with the rust we're gonna have to neutralize it with uh, baking soda maybe because the baking soda is a base and neutralizes acid so and then we, after that we're gonna rinse it for a while maybe we're gonna run the hose through it for a while and that's it then we're gonna dry it and we're gonna hope for the best while it is out actually now that it's empty it's relatively empty at least it's below the level of the drain so now i'm gonna start the engine and i'm gonna make it run out of gas so also the line empties and then while the tank is out maybe we're gonna disconnect the fuel pump and we're gonna blow through the line and we're gonna see if we can get rid of anything that's inside the line as well so that's it i'm not gonna keep you here for the entire process i just wanted to show you the before and maybe if something interesting happens i'm gonna show you also but if not i'm just gonna bring you back when the tank is out and when we're ready to pour the muriatic acid okay so the gas tank is out and you can see it's beautifully restored on the outside it's like painted and all that but inside look at that it's unbelievable why would they leave it like that? Okay, so what I suggest is let's pour some muriatic acid inside. It doesn't need to be full. We just need enough, probably 300, 400 milliliters. So, it can, so we can make all the walls wet 
and uh, go from there. First of all, though, um, I think there's more fuel inside because it was on one side. So we're going to try to drain that. I don't know if there's a lip here. Yeah, there is a lip here. So we can't really drain it from there. But um, let me see if I can tilt it in certain way so I can maybe go this way. I don't know. I think I'm, I can hear it splashing inside. All right, actually there's not much fuel. It, it is mostly sand or some debris inside that it's from, I guess, like flaky rust and stuff that is going left and right. There's very little fuel. So I don't mind mixing it with the muriatic acid. So I just want to find something that I can seal this hole so we can have only one opening. Actually, there's another one on the bottom, right? There's this one too. So we have to plug this hole and this hole so we can only have one for the muriatic acid to go in and out. Uh, that's where the fuel sender went. And by the way, look at the fuel sender even. I don't know, I think they used, maybe that's what, what happened. Maybe they used muriatic acid or some other kind of uh, rust remover which they didn't re neutralize and it just made it rust even worse after. So, because never seen a sending unit this rusty. Or the gas tank was full of water at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let me figure out something for there. Okay, so all the holes are plugged, all the other ones. And for this one, I think I found a very smart solution. This is a cup from a spray can, a smaller one, not the regular ones. Fits right inside here. And I'm gonna tighten it. And when I did my, my Spitfire tank years ago, I poured a lot of muriatic acid. I think I poured like two liters, four liters, something like that. Here we're gonna pour very little. Um, and what happened is why I plugged all the holes, but I created pressure inside and it started coming out and I was uh, afraid that it was gonna about to explode. Here, here we're gonna pour, pour very little, not too much. So it's gonna be fine. I already actually put maybe half a liter of water inside and we're gonna pour about half a liter of muriatic acid as well, because we don't want it to be concentrated. I don't have a mask, so I'm not gonna breathe. Honestly, that's my best solution to that. I just walked away to take a breath. <laughs> now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna close it. Okay, now I can breathe. Honestly, as you can see, I'm doing that outside and I don't want this anywhere close to my garage inside because even the fumes are very, very corrosive of the muriatic acid. Again, when I was doing my Spitfire tank, it was in my workplace and I left the container of muriatic acid open overnight on the table as I had other tools and in the morning when I came, all my tools were rusted, like all my tools. Okay, so let's see, I'm just gonna splash it all over to make sure that there's, all the walls are wet. Okay, it's leaking from some, it's leaking from here. And it's again, because it creates a lot of pressure inside, it becomes hot. That's fine, let it lose a little bit. I don't care. I'm just gonna leave it like that for a while. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna splash it all over again, probably two, three times in the next half an hour or so. And then we're gonna drain it and we're gonna rinse it and we will see if there's any improvement inside. I'm pretty sure there will be. All right, it's been half an hour and I flipped it a few times back and forth. So I think that's gonna be enough. And it's getting dark outside, but I have to finish. <laughs> now that I started, I have to finish. So we're gonna drain it 
and then we're gonna rinse it and we're gonna put some baking soda inside and water and we're gonna rinse it again but first of all we're gonna have to drain it so we're gonna drain it into this container here Okay, so I rinsed it three times and hopefully that's enough. And now we're gonna put the baking soda inside. Luckily I have a whole bunch. So we're gonna put a lot. Okay, that should be enough. You know what, I spilled here on the table so I want to see what's going to happen if I put some. Look at that. <laughs> see the reaction? I don't want to just rinse it. I want to neutralize it before I rinse it. So that should be okay there. So we're gonna put more water. Okay. Now we're gonna rinse it two more times and then we're gonna have to figure out a way to dry it. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what we've done. <laughs> Not much. Wow. Well, we've done actually, we've done actually a little bit, but I think it's gonna need more. Let me try with the light. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna need at least one more time, but it's definitely better, right? It's definitely better than what it was, but it's gonna need more. So, should we dry it now and continue tomorrow? Yeah, I think it needs to be dried. It's gonna blow hot air inside until it becomes warm and everything evaporates, hopefully through this other opening. Okay, I run the, the heater for a pretty long time, maybe around, around 20 minutes, and this is what we have inside now. Yeah, it's still not great, but it is much better than before. So anyways, uh, even if there's a little bit more water inside, I think that is water there, is it? Can't tell. Yeah, that's still water there. Come on. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it like that. Even if it rusts a little bit more, it's uh, fine because tomorrow we're gonna do the same procedure one more time with probably more muriatic acid. So it's fine that it has a little bit of water until tomorrow. That's where we're gonna leave it for tonight. Okay, so it's the next day and after another session of muriatic acid and rinsing and neutralizing. This is what we have. I think that's much better now, isn't it? There's still a little bit like I'm still freezing it because is this, I don't know if this is debris that I can rinse off or I don't know but it is definitely better than before, isn't it? Let's see, down there in the bottom. It's actually white now. <laughs> well, that wall before was all rusted. So yeah, 
I'll see if I can rinse that. Nope. That's how it is. Well, as long as it's not loose stuff that is gonna go through the filter again and into the carb, then I'm fine with it. So, um, anyways, now it's full of water. I just emptied it, now I have to empty it again. And uh, then I'm gonna dry it and that's it. We're gonna install it back in the car. We're not using any of those special liners and stuff because the owner doesn't like them. And I heard from other people that after a few years they start flaking inside and there's no point of them. So that's how my Spitfire gas tank is. I just uh, cleaned it with muriatic acid and uh, rinsed it. And I don't even remember neutralizing it. I think I just rinsed it. And it's been good for the last, I don't know, seven years. So that's what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and dry and we're gonna install it back. All right, the gas tank is installed back in, wired, hooked up underneath. That was my main concern because these ferro fittings or compression fittings sometimes leak after you reuse them. But now it is filled up again. I put about 10 liters of new gas and it is uh, not leaking. So that's great. The gauge also shows properly. Made sure that the float is floating. <laughs> and uh, while the gas tank was out, I disconnected this line from here and I blew air through it. And it looks like it was clean. So. We're hoping now that everything is going to be good. I also primed with the fuel pump a little bit here with the thumb pump and uh, started the car. It runs, it drives, <laughs> so it's good. So that completes the gas tank restoration. Hopefully it's not going to rust anymore. There was a little bit of surface rust. By the time I dried it, it already started flush rusting you know it always happens with uh, bare metal but uh, before i put it in i actually as it was on the table here i put about 150 200 milliliters of gas and I, I flipped it all over to to wash all the sides of the tank and to make it like kind of coat it with uh, gasoline all over so it's good um, i'm gonna recommend to the owner when he gets the car to fill it up all the way to the top just to make sure that it splashes everywhere around the tank and that completes the gas tank job but there's two more jobs that we want to do on this car one is a new starter motor because this one is giving problems to the owner even when i tried to start it it was going clink 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 and it wasn't engaging so we're just gonna replace it um, the thing is though he tried to replace it himself but it didn't work he couldn't take it out because it was tight here but the other job that we need to do on this car might be also helpful for the starter replacing and that is installing a oil pressure gauge in the car so as you may know the Spitfires don't have an oil pressure gauge they just come with temperature fuel that's it um, there is an oil pressure light here that is connected to this switch but in general people don't trust it including me and i have an additional gauge installed right here on top oil gauge oil pressure gauge that i keep an eye on uh, however for this owner he preferred to buy an electric one so how that one works is i took it out already i was surprised i've never seen one of these it works electrically so instead of that switch on the engine you install this thing which converts the pressure into an electrical signal i guess it changes the resistance depending on the oil pressure so this is how this is the schematic that came with it which a little bit weird to me so there's the black and the red here they want you to put them red to ignition switch 12 volts and black to the battery which is okay normal then the green connects to this 
terminal here and to the this tab on the switch here the terminal on the switch so that's clear but then we have the other ones here this one and this one and they are positive and negative and again to ignition switch 12 volts and to battery negative so why we have these here and here i don't understand are they all required i don't know so i'm gonna test them i'm gonna put power and ground to these two here and then i'm gonna check if i have power and ground here maybe they give you options maybe they give you this and this or this and this if these this and this are not connected i'm just gonna connect them i'm gonna put this one here and this one here and then i'm gonna run power and ground from the switch and somewhere on the body and we're gonna run a green wire all the way to the switch on the engine but why why do i say that this is gonna help us for also for the starter motor because when we remove this one from here we're probably gonna be able to pull out the starter motor this way and install the new one so we're gonna do these two jobs at the same time okay i figured it out i thought so but i wasn't really sure um, the black and red here are actually for the illumination so you shouldn't con connect the red one to the ignition switch you should connect it to your illumination on the dash to your dash lights so yeah that's why they are separate so now we have here power and ground that makes me think now if they can't even write a proper schematic how how good of a quality this is can you trust it for oil pressure <laughs> well it is what it is we're gonna do it okay just wanted to show you the difference look at this gear and look at this gear there's a little difference <laughs> okay so i installed the switch here also i was able to replace the starter motor so it is hooked up as before here there's a cigarette lighter that somebody stole there this is switched power through the ignition switch so i hooked up the power and ground and ground to this wiring and only for the illumination of the gauge i spliced off one of the of the gauge illuminations here so now here we have the red is the power switched power through the ignition switch ground the black one the yellow one is the illumination so i hooked it up to this red one here and the green is the one from the switch so this is now all wired and the owner asked me to just clip it somewhere and he's gonna take care of it later he's gonna mount it wherever he wants so i decided to just clip it here like that so now we can test the starter and see how this is gonna work uh warning though this is a very big warning this thing is just like the fuel and temperature gauges it uses permanent power and it uses ground through a variable resistor which in this case it is the temperature sender in this case it is the fuel uh, level sender the float in the tank this one works the exact same way however for these two we have a uh, voltage stabilizer which stabilizes the voltage to 10 volts exactly so it is always showing the same reading for this one now we have power from the battery and the power on the battery varies as you know sometimes it's 12 volts sometimes it's 14 volts depending on how much the alternator is charging at this moment so i don't know how accurate this is going to be but that's how it's going to be i was thinking maybe i should connect it to the temperature and the fuel gauge power which is through the voltage stabilizer but then it's going to be 10 volts it's not going to be 12 so again it's not going to be correct so i'm just going to let the owner know that this is going to vary probably uh, with rpm it's going to go higher and lower on top of how actually but that actually happens when the when you have a pressure going directly to the switch right with higher rpm you have higher pressure so i don't know um i'm not a fan of electrical oil pressure gauge but let's see how it works uh oh the power <laughs> the battery is disconnected 
Okay. Okay, she started. And oil pressure actually works. <laughs> okay, it shows 60 now. Well, as expected, it varies. So again, I don't know how accurate it is, but again, it is better than nothing, right? Because here, normally you only have light that comes on if you don't have any pressure. Here, at least, you can get used to some number, and if it goes very low, then obviously have low pressure. So anyways, I think, I think we are done with this car. We're gonna return it to the owner, and I hope he's gonna be happy with it. I hope two weeks later well unfortunately a few days later she's back and she's back with the same symptoms so i don't like that <laughs> i don't like them when they come back so unfortunately the owner was out for a cruise with his wife the car just started stuttering and and, and died just uh, obviously starving for fuel again but anyways I had a quick look at it the other day. It was uh, on Friday evening it came, but I didn't touch it for the weekend because I was busy. But I took a quick look and these are the symptoms. Look what it has. So look at the fuel filter here. Uh, I already removed the hose to see if fuel was coming and it is coming. So I wanted to see what's going on. So I started it and let me start it and show you. what happens when I turn it off. Wait. Come on. So the fuel comes again. But it's just coming at a very slow rate. So unfortunately we still have a blockage somewhere and I'm pretty sure that the tank is clean because you know, you saw what happened with it. So there might have been a little bit more in the pipe or the, pipe, or the line has kink somewhere or whatever. So that's why she is on jack stands because I want to go underneath and see if something obvious on externally I can see on the line so let's go so she's a pretty clean car look at this isn't she a beauty but whatever happened with the gas tank I don't know anyway so this is the fuel line coming out here there's a connection here and then it goes all the way to the front Like it follows here. This is the brake line joint. But the line goes here. And then it comes up there. There's nothing wrong with it. Even they put pieces of hose here to protect it. There's no bad kinks. There's nothing. So I'm just assuming that there's heavy particles that came down because it comes down from the tank and then it, here it goes up so i'm just assuming that this whole line acts as a what do you call it like uh, where heavy particles fall and stay there so anyway you see now it is full again so i can start her again she's gonna run for a while and then she's gonna start for fuel again so one of the times when the owner brought it, it had the same problem. I actually had to go and tow him from somewhere. And when we came, I took out this hose and I blew through it and it went puff in the gas tank and it started working normally. However, this time I don't want to do that. I don't want to blow whatever is in there in the line. I don't want to blow it in the tank. So I'm going to have to obviously drain it 
and disconnect this little connection here and then blow from there to this direction or from here in that direction doesn't really matter but the line needs to be disconnected from both sides so i'm gonna take the opportunity to drain it with my uh, vacuum pump i'm just gonna clean it so i can see what i'm draining actually actually i have a better idea why don't we start the engine and make it suck all the fuel from the filter so we leave it dry here and then before we turn it off we're gonna clamp this hose so no more fuel can come into the filter then we're gonna disconnect it from here and then we're gonna run a hose into the white container and we will see what's gonna come out and if it doesn't come out too fast then we can figure out a way to blow into the gas tank from here just blow into it to see if something is going to come out of the line. Okay, we have our container perfectly clean now. So let's see what's gonna come out. I'm gonna open the line there. If anything is gonna come out. There we go. Start it. So that's the rate that it is coming at. Pretty slow. And yes, you can see stuff, wow, you can see lots of stuff coming, how come? Okay, I'm going to try to blow in the gas tank, I don't know if that's going to work somehow, huh? we can try. another way all right so there are some particles inside it's not perfectly clean but you know what I'm gonna clean it again and we're gonna use it as a pump you know it's a vacuum pump so we're gonna put the cover on and we're gonna use it as a pump and we'll see if that's gonna help somehow So what came again but I'm curious now to see if the if it is gonna flow on its own faster or not after we sucked so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna open the line it's clamped right now so I'm gonna open it again there you go. nope I think it should be coming much faster. The problem is I don't want to blow into it because I'm going to blow everything back into the tank. I want to blow this way. And for this reason, well, that's actually faster now, I think. I don't know. But the only way to blow from that direction into this direction is to disconnect the line. I can't figure out a way to blow inside the tank. The thing is, three quarters of the tank is full and I need to empty it before I disconnect this line because there's no soft line anywhere that I can pinch, not even in the boot. It goes a hard line directly from the tank down. So I can't turn the fuel off in order to disconnect that line I have to drain it <laughs> maybe that's what I'm gonna do maybe I should use uh, 
I have a electric fuel pump. I'm just gonna use it to drain the fuel through the line in this direction. So at least we keep cleaning it. You know what I mean? Okay, I have another setup now. I have a electric pump and I have 12 volt electric supply here. And we're gonna see if we can suck more with the electric pump maybe the mechanical pump on the engine and my vacuum pump are not able to suck i just want to suck all the garbage out you know what i mean from the line oh my clump my line is still clamped okay Shouldn't it come at a higher rate though? I'm pretty sure it should come faster. You know what, actually, let's do an experiment. Let's move this setup to the back of the car and try to suck from the filler port of the gas tank and see what actually the ability of this pump is. Maybe that's how much it sucks, I don't know. Pretty much the same rate. This pump does nothing. Let's do the same with the vacuum pump. Okay, so this pump actually has the ability to suck pretty fast when there's no obstruction. So let's keep sucking with it from the front and hopefully it's gonna suck out the dirt from the line. Okay, after a few containers, like I think two times I sucked a full container of fuel with the vacuum pump through the line and now it's just coming on its own. You see, there's no pump anymore. So I believe whatever was blocking it is now gone so that's good but i'm gonna continue to drain it and i don't know if there's any more yeah i don't know i'm gonna continue to drain it just so whatever is in the gas tank maybe we can filter it out but that's a pretty good rate now it is pretty good in the meantime i'm also gonna change the filter because look at that there's lots of stuff at the bottom and I'm assuming for the first few, probably two, three gas tanks, the owner is going to have to continue changing filters. But at least I'm hoping that the line is gonna not, is not going to get clogged again. All right, what is this? Two and a half and two and a half, five gallons. And that's one and a quarter. So appro approximately six, six and a half gallons a few later because these are filled over the mark. <laughs> so six and a half gallons or about 25, 26 liters of uh, gas later, we are finally sucking air from the front. So I sucked it all through the front. I, I was considering sucking it from here, but I said, you know what, let's make it, let's make all the fuel go through the line. And I sucked it actually with the vacuum. So I give it more of a push and this way it can just drag all the garbage with it. I filtered it all here and I don't see anything in the filter, like not no big particles. And there's a little bit inside the canister because I kept draining it through this hole. So the heavy particles were staying at the bottom and And that's what's inside. I'm hoping that that's everything. But what we're gonna do now is, uh, I'm gonna go and suck a little bit more through here now because the drain line in the gas tank is sticking up 
this much probably like a inch or something so there's always an inch of fuel at the bottom of the tank that's for exact this reason so you don't suck all the garbage and that's at the bottom but i looked inside that's what it is i mean i don't remember how bad it was after we finished the tank but i think it was better than that i think it continued to rust after we delivered it and i oh, i think all oh, these again are particles how do i get rid of these hmm. anyways i'm just gonna suck a little bit more fuel to make sure that it is under the level of the drain okay finally this line is disconnected now and uh, I'm gonna blow through the line from this end towards the front, but I wanna catch it. I wanna see what's gonna come out. So I'm gonna dump this now. This is what came out from all the draining. And then we're gonna clean this perfectly and we're gonna catch whatever comes out of the line. Even though I don't think there's much left in it, but uh, we will see. All right, it's hooked up through the holes and inside here so let's go blow in the back uh -oh. <laughs> my line blew my line blew right here well maybe i'm not gonna catch because whatever came out came out i think but i put it this way hopefully it's not gonna come out now, but whatever came out, maybe came out already here. Too bad. Okay, that's my setup now. So I have this uh, other jug, it's about two gallons. I have the hose hooked up to the gas tank. And I'm just gonna start pouring now one gallon uh, at the time or two gallons at the time into the gas tank, a filtered fuel and then when it comes out we're gonna filter it again we're gonna start pouring it again and we're just gonna start circulating it because this needs to be filtered looks like there's more particles at the bottom of the gas tank so we need to do that process multiple times okay so this is the second jug so i poured one and i collected it in this one and when it was done, there was a lot of stuff in the holes. So I drained the holes here and look what's inside. Wow. Anyway, and then I took the jug and I filtered it into the other one. And let me show you what was in it. And there's some red stuff in it. So, so I'm doing it for a second time now but this time I don't see much stuff inside. Before I could see black particles like this travel. So I'm gonna do that three, four, five times, as many times as needed. And every time I'm gonna filter it and I'm gonna make sure to keep doing it until there's nothing left in the filter. Okay, I don't know how many times I've done it, like many. And <clears throat> this is the filter from the last three or four times I didn't clean it and there's still a little bit at the bottom you see a little bit it's not a lot so I'm just gonna continue so I'm gonna change the filter now and I'm gonna pour all the fuel so for now until now I was doing it with one in one out you know but now I have more jugs here i collected all the jugs that i have and i have another small one so i'm gonna pour all the 25 26 liters and then i'm just gonna move the hose from one to a second to a third one and hopefully that's gonna wash also the walls of the tank even though i believe that all the debris was at the bottom right so i'm hoping that we just shake it enough and like stir it until everything comes out I don't know what to do anymore. Okay, like this you can see it better. So I believe that's not too bad anymore, but again, let's see what it's gonna look like after the, all the 25 or 26 liters of gas go through one more time. And I'm gonna keep the same filter for all of them. 
these I'm gonna burn at the end. <laughs> I don't want to leave them anywhere because they might combust. All right. All the fuel went through the tank, came out, and it got filtered. So let's see this time what it's gonna show. Come on, come out. Well, I think this is perfect. There's a little bit of like dust, but not big particles. And I think that this can be caught by the filter. Of course, the owner is gonna have to change the filter two, three times before it cleans itself perfectly. But I think that's uh, where we're gonna leave it. So I'm gonna hook up the line again and we're gonna fill up all the fuel. We're gonna put it back. It is filtered, <laughs> so should be good. And I haven't changed the fuel filter yet here. It occurred to me that it's a good idea to see if I plug it in now, how it is gonna run. We'll see if it stays running or if it stays. So that's gonna tell me whether the problem was only because the line was clogged or because also this filter is pretty dirty. So we'll see about that. So I'm gonna plug it in as it is. We're gonna run the car to test it and then we're gonna unplug it again. It's easy. And we're gonna change the filter to make sure that we have a fresh filter. And what I didn't show you here, but that's after every gallon, I emptied the hose into this because apparently the hose, you know how it was going down and then up in the jug, there was lots of particles that I could see in the hose, so I emptied them here. So there was, there was a lot of stuff in the tank. It's not like it was only in the line. And the gas tank itself, now, let me see, come on. I think before we could see some uh, particles there. Okay, now it focused. Now it is pretty clean. So anyway, um, I don't think that it rusted more than before. I think that's where it was because remember after we neutralized it, well, you, you sure remember because for you it is the same video, right? <laughs> for me, it was a week or more than a week ago. Uh, but yeah, after we neutralized it, and rinsed it by the time we dried it it surface rusted again to this point but that's not something that i would be worried about this is not flaky rust that can clog anything it is just surface rust anyways let me connect the pipe and we're gonna start the car Okay, so now we're gonna change the filter as well. And uh, that's gonna be it. Hopefully, no more problems for the owner. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Rusty Beauties Restorations too. And thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, subscribing and sharing. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, you can go under the video and buy some merchandise uh, like Rusty Beauties coffee mugs or t-shirts or stickers or a hoodie for example so if you're interested go roll down under the video there's my store or in the description also there's a link to my store so that's a way to support me as well if you want to do that so thanks again and i'll see you in the next one bye